Welcome. Um, this is our first lecture on forces. So um, normally I show a little video. I will post this uh, video um, link on uh, the Google Classroom assignment so you can look at it. It gives us an overview of uh, the chapter, obviously, in forces um, with an emphasis on gravity. Um, but let's go. We're going to talk about forces. Um, and you can see here Sir Isaac Newson, Newton. Um, he started to think about gravity and the forces of gravity gravity when uh, supposedly an apple fell and hit him on the head. So uh, let us uh, begin. So um, first of all, what is a force? Now, a force is a push or pull um, on, on an object. It doesn't matter what the object is. Now, we have two uh, types of forces um, to start with. We have a balanced force, which we would say a net zero. Um, I would almost even refer to it as standing still. There's no acceleration in either direction or any direction. Um, my example would be maybe standing on a diving board. Now, if you're following along um, and taking some notes, balanced forces is your number one on your study guide. So go ahead and pause and put that in there. Welcome back. Um, our other force is unbalanced force. And this is just the opposite. You're moving, or I would like to say accelerating in the direction that's uh, um, more of a force. And we're going to talk about them. Obviously, jumping off the diving board would be an unbalanced force. You are accelerating in a direction. And unbalanced force is number eight on yours. So um, forces that are not equal or opposite. Now, here's a great example of balanced or unbalanced forces. If you would look at this, and these are my kids, this would be uh, Max and Sadie. Um, Max is pulling on the teddy bear and Sadie is pulling on the teddy bear. Is this balanced or unbalanced force? Well, are they moving in any direction? No, so we would consider this a balanced force. Now, we're gonna talk a lot about free body diagrams in the near future. Um, but to get us started, we have to understand um, how we draw things. So in physics, we show all forces, the magnitude and direction by using an arrow. And we've talked about this a little bit. The size of the arrow says how big it is or magnitude. Think of a number. Five is smaller than 10. So we would have a, the 10 would be a bigger arrow. And we'll show a little bit of that as we go. The direction of the arrow indicates the direction. Now, uh, for us, we will only have four directions, up, down, left, or right. So really a two-dimensional um, drawing is what we will do. And normally, no matter what we're talking about, we'll simplify it as just a, a small box to, um, to keep it simple. Um, that will be more on free body diagrams and drawing them in the next lecture. Again, um, to save time in the video, I'm not stopping between slides to make sure you write them down. You should be doing that. So at any time, Mr. Foss goes too fast, pause it, write it down, or you miss something. Rewind, watch that little bit of the video again. Now, here is a picture of a free body diagram. We'll come back to this tomorrow. Um, the box in the middle can be anything, a person, um, a book, or whatever. And then you can see that there's four forces that we're going to talk about. Um, and you don't need to write them down right now. You'll get them in the next slide or two. And F stands for force. And then you see normal up top applicate, excuse me, applied, moving to the right, friction moving to the left, and grav or gravity moving downwards. Again, I just want you to see those forces. Um, we'll talk a lot more about this type of diagram, which is a free body diagram um, in the next lecture. So here are the ones that we want to write down. There are really five forces that we'll talk about in physical science. 
So the first one is applied. This is when you are pushing something or something is pushing something else. You're applying that force. It's not um, being done upon itself. The next one is the force of gravity. And we're pretty used to this one because uh, we feel it every day. This is the force that is pulling down on you um, because the earth is so massive, it's pulling you towards it and other uh, items. So that's why the apple falls. It doesn't fly up in the air. MC force, what we call normal. This is the supporting force. Um, you see, I got uh, my hand here and I put my pen on it. Um, there is a normal force exerting um, on this and gravity pushing down. Um, if you didn't have that normal force, uh, it would just like fall through the ground. And that's why my hand is supporting that up. And then we have um, our friction, excuse me, our friction force. Um, this is opposes motion. And that's the one we're gonna talk a lot uh, about. And then we have air resistance. So when you have air resistance, remember um, that's the air trying to slow it down. Um, so those are the uh, five types of friction that we'll talk about. Again, make sure you pause the video, get those down. Um, those are really, really important. Okay, let's see if from those notes, we can answer some questions. Which of the following does not describe a force? A, causes an object to change direction, causes objects to start moving, causes objects at rest to remain stationary, causes objects to stop moving. Now, um, if we didn't read the question too, uh, correctly, we would think, hey, aren't those a lot of the answers? But it asks for which one does not describe a force. So um, think about this one um, and give yourself an answer. Forces that are equal in size but opposite in direction would be called what? Balance force, unbalanced force, net force, and friction forces. Now, this is a definition word, so I really want you to get this one. They are equal but opposite. So this would be balanced force. We're pushing against each other. We're not moving. This is balanced force. If the net force acting on an object is zero, the object will remain the same, move backwards, accelerate in the direction of the strongest force, remain at a constant speed. This is a very good question here. Um, want you to think about this one. This is one that we can come back to, obviously, but if the net force is zero, I think we can uh, throw out B or C. Now think really hard. Would it remain at rest or would it be a constant speed? Think about the definitions we've talked about. What is an unbalanced force acting on a soccer ball rolling through the grass, slowing it down. Um, again, this one's not necessarily a definition word, but I think it's very important to know. So I'm gonna give you this one without you thinking too much. Um, we have not talked about inertia yet, so we can kind of throw that out. We will talk about it. Um, gravity pushes down, but the soccer ball is rolling across. So that's really not slowing it down. It's not the normal force, but yep, D, it's friction. Friction is slowing down that, that ball. All right. A book at rest on a table. Which forces are acting on the book? Now to do this one, we have to think a little bit, um, and I'm gonna draw a little bit on here. Um, what is happening? Is the book moving? It is not, so it's just right there. Now, unless we're in a, a uh, different world, we have gravity pushing down. So we have the force of gravity 
pushing down on the book. Now, if we only had gravity pushing down on the book, it would just go right through the table. Something is keeping it up, and that's the, actually the force of the table, and that is our normal force. Sorry, I don't know why that line came in there, but this would be the force normal. Now, uh, I didn't do a great job with that, uh, but if we're thinking about it, should both arrows be the same magnitude or length? And that's yes, because it's not moving any place, it's stationary. So our correct answer here is, uh, what is acting on it? We have A and we have B. So our correct answer here is E. Now, for the object shown below, identify if it is moving and if so, what direction? So let's look at a couple of these here. Let's look at up and down. We have the normal force of 80 and newtons, and we'll talk about newtons in a second. That's pushing it up, but force of gravity is also pushing it down at 80. Um, so when we look at this, one's 80 in one direction, one's 80 in the other. And it's just really, you can add these together or uh, subtract them. 80 minus 80 equals zero. So right there, that's zero newtons, that N, we have um, a balanced force. So it's not going any direction. Now let's look at the other two. I'm gonna change to green here. Um, we have friction, which is slowing us down, which is 10. And then we have an applied force, think of you pushing it at 50. And they're in opposite directions. So I have 50 minus 10 will give me 40 newtons of force going to, and look at the arrow, to the right. So let's look at our uh, answers. Um, not moving, moving up, moving down, to the right, or to the left. In this case, we are moving to the right. So the answer is D. All right. Which two forces would an object experience while falling through the air? Um, now, again, unless we're in a different planet, gravity always affects. So if I look at this question real quick, um, B, C, and D all have gravity in them. So I like that. I got to cross out. A, that cannot be the answer. Now we have to understand our definitions. Um, we would look first at normal, then air resistance, and then applied. Now applied is you're, you're doing it. If something's falling, you're not actually doing it. So we can throw out applied. And then normal force would be a, a probably a decent answer but nothing's pushing it up. Um, and so our correct answer would have to be air resistance. So in here, our correct answer is C. All right, um, one more question here. Two people are playing tug of war. Now think back to that bear example of I had, I said Max and Sadie and it didn't look like anybody was winning. But let's say person A was pulling five newtons to the left, and that would be max if that was. And person B, Sadie, was pulling 4.5 newtons to the right. What's the net force? Well, again, net force, we just have to subtract them. So five, and I'm gonna draw an arrow to remind us, to the left, minus 4.5 to the right, would give us a difference, so it's an unbalanced force of point five. Now we just have to remember what direction, and that's why we draw free body dry diagrams a lot, which again we'll hear in the next lecture, but that makes our answer pretty easy. Point five is the correct, because again we're minusing them, they're in the opposite direction, and that is to the left. What unbalanced force acts on a ball thrown through the air to bring it back down to the ground. 
Well, we really just talked about this one. See if you can get it. Yep. Oh, it's uh, not air resistance, sorry. I was circling the wrong one. It is gravity. That is bringing it back down to the ground. Um, so we talked about air resistance is slowing it down and gravity is what's bringing it back down. All right, so um, let's get onto friction. Um, this is not a definition term, but a, a good one to know, obviously. Friction opposes motion. And we give it a unit of N or Newtons. I was talking about that. But that's not only for friction. That's for any force. And friction depends on two things, at least in this class. And that's the weight and the type of surface that we have. Um, and you can imagine, uh, like ice uh, is very flat and uh, slippery. So that uh, has less friction than like gravel, um, which is rough. All right. So we have uh, about four or five different types of friction. The first one, and here's our key when you write down your notes, it's the greatest um, to overcome. When something's standing still, it is static, and it will take the most force to get to move. Now, once you get it to move, that is called kinetic friction or sliding friction. Again, the word kinetic is moving. Um, and you can see my little example of uh, the puppy sliding down the slide. Now, um, it is moving, uh, but again, that friction's there, it's sliding. So this would be weaker than static. So again, static is the toughest or the strongest force of friction and then kinetic. Again, I need to remind us, um, if I'm going too fast, uh, pause the video, make sure you uh, get it down, um, and then uh, when we work on questions, there'll be some more help, I would say. And uh, the third type is rolling friction, and this is even weaker. Now, if you think about it, this would make sense because our cars have wheels, and that looks just like this picture with the, the round, um, their brown spheres or balls on the bottom um, that make it less friction on this one. So uh, once again, static is the strongest, and then kinetic, and then rolling. Now, there are more than just these. There is fluid, um, and this one, um, you know, the picture is a pretty good one with uh, with uh, showing water, but we can also talk about moving through a gas. And that's really uh, what we do every day because there's gas around us. There's the air that we walk through. Um, so fluid, uh, maybe if you really wanted to argue, um, could maybe be the easiest. And then again, that would depend a little bit on the fluid. If you're talking gas, gas is easily uh, the less resistant or less um, friction force. All right, now um, friction is not always bad and it's not always good. Um, we want friction when we walk. Um, again, like now when it's icy and stuff, uh, you don't wanna slide and fall. So it's very good. Now it can be harmful if your tires are all wore down and you can't stop, that's not very good either. So it can be a good thing, it can be a bad thing, just depending on what we wanna use it for. All right, let's hit a couple questions really quick, um, and then your assignment will be to work on page four and five. Which type of friction would be the greatest to overcome? Well, those are our four. If you forgot, rewind the video, look at all four of those, which one's the best answer? Question two, which type of friction is represented in the following picture? Now I put it in parentheses, but the box is moving. It's hard to tell with the picture, but to pretend it's moving. So again, of our four, which one would it be? If you forgot, um, go back, look at those definitions, answer the question. Surprise, we're looking at another type of friction. Um, this is a feather, obviously, and what is it in that, uh, um, 
so we can talk about what type of friction it is. And let's look at this picture as it uh, it's falling from the sky. So think about that, falling from the sky. Um, definition question here, what the last five, six slides have all been about. Um, what is a force that opposes motion? Now we talked about it, and there are four different ones we talk about, static, um, kinetic, uh, rolling, and then fluid. So what's our final answer on that one? Ooh, I love this question. Friction between car tires and the pavement is greatest when the car is blank and is called blank. Well, I think the, the easier part is to know that it is static. We went back and we looked at those definitions and we got them. Now, really, what does static mean? Does it mean it's at rest or is it in motion? And yep, you've got it. Static means it's at rest. So our best answer here is when the car is at rest and it's called static, it is not moving. The force you have to overcome to start an object moving is called, well, those are our four types again. Um, again here, uh, the force you have to overcome to start an object moving. So is the object moving yet? No. So of those four, what would be our correct answer? You got it. This we gotta overcome static friction. Okay, so um, there are the notes. Make sure that you have them all down. Now, the assignment is page four and five um, in your study guide. Yes, we are skipping pages two and three. That will be a little bit on the next lecture. Now, I expect you to, uh, to work through these. On the next video, I'm gonna go through and explain and help give some answers uh, to them. So if you get stuck, you can watch that and get the answers. But again, uh, do your best to uh, um, get them all done so you have the answers. Thank you.